I have used lots and lots of Orico devices. This here is an Orico NVMe. Looks like they are now putting out NVMe's. I've seen a few of these pop up on Amazon, at least here in Canada. This is the J10, it's a Gen 3 drive. They also have a Gen 4 drive, very fast Gen 4 drive. I've used many Orico devices. I have like enclosures here. For example, here's an Orico enclosure. Uh, I have other devices as well from Orico. I have a hard drive thing over here. Right, they do a lot of enclosure type stuff. So I guess it's only fitting that they decided to make NVMEs. They may have had these in other places, but in Canada, this is a relatively new device. So I found this on Amazon. It was a really good price uh, for what it is. It's a one terabyte drive coming in at probably like 40% cheaper than really every other brand on Amazon at the time. So that's very good. Uh, I just want to test it out. So we're going to see what we can get out of here. It looks like it does go all the way up to four terabytes, which is nice. So there's a two goes all the way down to 256, all the way up to four terabytes. I haven't seen on Amazon two terabytes or four terabytes. Not now, at least in Canada, but I mean, that's fantastic. Let's test this out with one terabyte. It uh, should be pretty good. I mean, obviously it gets a little faster as you add speed, as you add uh, more data to the drive. That's pretty normal for uh, NVMe, so that's good. It looks like it has, uh, you know, this is gonna be a 2280 form factor. I don't know much about it, you know, DRAM, any of that kind of stuff, but it's easy enough to test. So the way we're gonna test this, put it into the computer. Uh, we're gonna put it into the computer, test it out, see how it performs, fill it up see what performs again when it's full and then probably what i'll do is i'll put it in an, an exclude in a in, then probably what i'll do is i'll put it in an external enclosure and see what performs there but i expect this thing to perform pretty well overall but let's open it up and have a look at what's inside So NVMe prices are just absolutely skyrocketing. NAND prices are pretty inflated right now. Some of the, like, you know, the big brands, I'd say the brands that normally make NVMe's and people are using them all the time, their prices are getting kind of crazy, to be honest, let's be honest. Uh, so Orico coming out with a thing that's significantly cheaper than the competition is actually quite nice. And this is not some like random brand. Orico is not just like a brand that appeared out of nowhere. They've been doing enclosures and stuff forever. I've been using their stuff for a long time. So that's nice that you get that. Open that up there. Oh, you get a little heat sink. I didn't know it had a heat. Holy smokes, this thing has great value. I mean, you get a heat sink. It's not some crazy heat sink, but that's I mean, that's better than nothing. Put that on there and put it in your computer. I will actually test it with the heat sink then. I mean, in the laptop, you're not going to use that, but I'll, I'll give it a heat sink. Right? A lot of times I don't test it, but if it's going to come with one, then I'll give it a test. Uh, let's see what we have under here. Uh, so this is the controller here. Let's see what we get. Realtek controller, I guess that would be, because uh, that's a Realtek symbol. I don't know the specific model, but it looks like a Realtek controller. Okay, that's good. Uh, obviously, there's the ball grid arrays where they can uh, put in more chips. This is a one terabyte, so if you got a two terabyte, they would just put another NAND chip there and another NAND chip there. Pretty straightforward stuff. This is normally what you see. Uh, let's see if we can read anything on this. Probably be very difficult on camera. See if I can capture that on camera. I can see it in person, but on camera it's very difficult. Yeah, it might be a little hard. Here we go. So that's the NAND chip there. Not sure what brand that is, just off the top of my head, but that looks good. Uh, yeah, so it looks fine. Shenzhen Orico company. Uh, put it in the system and test it out. Here is a look at the NVMe inside the system. Now you can see it's showing up here. I have a few different test options here. I have Crystal Disk Mark, I have Auto Bench. I also have hardware info on the right here. So we're gonna be able to test temperatures. We're gonna be able to test speeds. What we'll do here is we will test it out, see how it performs. This is obviously the new drive over here. See how it performs with temperatures, see how it performs under full load inside the system here. And then what we'll do is we'll so then what we'll do is we'll check out some real world transfers, you know, see how it actually moves outside of synthetic stuff. Then we'll fill it right up and redo it. Okay, so here's a result. You can see here that instead of engines getting Gen 3 speeds exactly as advertised, you know, just pretty standard, 3,200 writes, uh, 3,200 reads. Writes are totally fine, around 2,000 or so. Auto bench, basically exactly the same. So yeah. going to be perfectly fine as a game drive or secondary drive. Uh, I mean, realistically, even an operating system should be fine, realistically. Uh, temperatures on the right here also look totally fine. I mean, certainly not getting hot by any means on the right here. We're looking at something around 40 degrees or something plateaued right across. So it just, just doesn't get hot with that heat sink. It's basically just hanging out at 40 degrees or whatever. So 
Okay, so now we're just going to move some real world transfers here, just start filling it up, see how it performs when we're actually moving real world data. And then we'll also test it once it's actually full as well. So yeah, you can see here the write through speed that's writing basically the same as the synthetic, you know, 1.7, 1.5 gigabytes per second. Uh, once the cache runs out, it probably will drop down. Not some super expensive drive. This is meant to be a relatively affordable, more budget drive, but you can see here it's writing through really well. We're doing six, 700 gigabytes movement and we're at about 1.5 up to two gigabytes per second here on the transfer speed, so that's good. We'll just see how long it can go until basically the cache uh, runs out and it starts to drop down. Okay, so here after writing quite a bit of data, probably 300, 250 to 300 gigabytes, now the cache has started to run out, so it's going to be a little bit slower now, so uh, that's fine. I mean, this is going to be the type of drive where, you know, you're primarily focusing on reading, gaming, you know, storing files, that kind of thing, uh, but it's still writing fine. I mean, you're still getting around 150, 200 megabytes a second or so on uh, transfers once it's, you know, the cache runs out. Uh, but realistically, I mean, this is the type of drive, yeah, you can move 100 gigabytes, 200 gigabytes, 300 gigabytes, 400 gigabytes without any issues really whatsoever. But once you start writing, you know, beyond that two to 300 gigabytes, it'll start to slow down a little bit. Here we have the drive basically filled right up, uh, you know, 192 left. So we're at about 80, 85% fullness here. And we'll just rerun the test here and see how they perform when the drive is actually full. Okay, so here's the results after the drive is actually full and they're exactly the same as when it wasn't full. So realistically, once this thing gets pretty filled up, it's going to still run basically the same realistically. It's not going to make any difference there. So that's basically the results on the drive here. It runs incredibly cool, 40 degrees, so perfect for something like a laptop. Slap it in your laptop, especially as a second drive. As a game drive, it's going to run super cool. Of course, you can throw this in a system as a game drive as well. It's going to run really well. Even if it's quite full, it's going to run really, really well really, really fast as well. And the only real, I guess, I wouldn't really call it negative, but because it's pretty common for a drive like this, once you do over, you know, 250, 300, 350 gigabytes of write in a row, the cache does run up. But that's actually pretty good for a drive of this price. Normally the cache would run a lot faster on a lot of these drives I test. So, I mean, yeah, you can throw from one drive to another, you know, hundreds of gigabytes before it starts to slow down. If you're actually installing games off of something like Steam, it's not going to run out of cache fast enough to actually hit a slow speed. So overall, I'm actually really impressed with this drive. It runs nice and cool. It is not expensive and it maintains really good reads and writes when it's relatively full and you're able to transfer several hundred gigabytes in one go.